Today, everyone is building generative AI applications. And one of the challenges faced today is how do you get from a minimal viable product into a production state of your generative AI application using OpenAI? So join us in the Azure Enablement Show to learn more how you can make the transition. Welcome back to the Azure Enablement Show. My name is Thomas, and today we will be chatting about the minimum viable product or MVPs for generative AI apps. Before we go, uh, remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the Azure Enablement Show so you get notified when a new show becomes available. If you have any questions, drop the comments below, uh, and we will come back to you and see what we can do there. Uh, we are joined today by Freddy, a cloud solution architect at Microsoft. Freddy, I'm excited to have you here uh, today and talk about some of the challenges which are coming with integrating generative AI uh, applications and creating these implementations. Uh, and to learn about what your recommendations and tools and best practices are um, and what you can share with your experience you had with customer implementing this. So hi, Freddy. Hello there, and I'm very happy to be here today, Thomas. Awesome, thank you. It's great having you. Um, like, so we're going to talk about generative AI um, today. Um, can you start us off by some of the common challenges organization organizations are facing uh, when deploying these apps? Sure. Uh, in fact, uh, the speed of AI development is relentless. We have so many innovations such as AI Studio, GPT-4, Turbo Copilot, and they are drastically reshaping how we use technology. So organizations are very, very fast. They are harnessing the Microsoft robust cloud capabilities to accelerate innovation. But this is causing a problem because uh, this uh, is outpacing the expectations about uh, the risks, especially when moving from a trial phase to full scale production. So it's critical at this moment to not overlook security and governance. For example, a rush deployment might skip essential security measures leading to problems like data breaches, system outages, leaks, uh, which can disrupt the services, and most of all, can affect the client's trust. So despite, despite this uh, slight advance of AI, we should prioritize security and a scalable approach by navigating these risks. Absolutely, I totally agree. I mean, the speed of AI uh, development currently uh, is incredible, uh, but obviously with speed, there is also some risk involved, right? And so um, can you share like some specific strategies uh, companies should adopt when they build um, their foundations for the generative AI apps or AI apps in, in general to make sure that they don't overlook any critical, critical steps? Sure. In fact, uh, no differently from traditional systems or applications, let's say that Gen AI applications, they should be treated the same. So you have the same risks such as hackers who can compromise systems, they can stall authentication keys, have unauthorized access, data breaches, they can affect sensitive information. And there's also challenges in ensuring high availability because these systems are becoming critical. So also another issue is the internal threats. When you have a chatbot that access all your information on premises, you should be careful which kind of data you allow it to access. So to counter these threats, we have a best practices provided by, by Microsoft. We have two of them to our rescue. The first one is called the Microsoft Well-Architected Framework, and the second one is called the Cloud Adoption Framework. So the WAF and the CAF, they guide uh, to the creation of uh, efficient, resilient, secure cloud platforms. So putting this concept into work, we have a materialization that we call the Azure Landing Zones. That is a practical setup that incorporates these two frameworks into guidance for enterprise level architecture. They provide clear examples how to implement best practices, choosing the right services, and focus on essential aspects like security, compliance, resource organization, and connectivity. Awesome. Um, so um, you talked about, like you mentioned, the CAF and the well architected framework. Um, can you explain a little bit how or what the role of the Azure landing zones is, and maybe also touch a bit on the what guidance the well-architected framework provides? Sure. In, in short, the Azure Landing Zone is a preset foundation within Azure. So it offers you an environment that's geared with the best practices by default, security, network compliance, as I said before. It can be used for companies of any size. 
it provides uh, you with the structure need to manage uh, complex platforms and also maintain a standard that is really hard to do nowadays because you have to keep involving your platform, but you have to keep it uh, safe at all times. So this uh, uh, landing zone, let's say, it complements the well architected framework because it will implement the different principles of it, such as cost management, the smooth operations, effective performance, reliability, and strong security. So together, CAF, WAF, Azure Landing Zones gives you a clear strategy, a clear reference architecture that will help you to set up and run your cloud solutions that are secure, cost effective, and reliable. And with these tools, you can confidently transition from a proof of concept to the enterprise ready in a structured and secure manner. Awesome. Uh, these are great tools and obviously and frameworks. Um, like, I mean, we all know that this is also critical for other applications, but with AI, uh, probably even more so. Um, can you give us an example where aligning to these structures um, was actually critical to go into production? Sure. Let's talk about a hospital that is providing emergency room services. This is an example. And uh, they are using this system to streamline patient triage. Basically, they use a service called Azure Document Intelligence to scan all types of incoming patient documents, like charts, notes, extracting key information, such as the symptoms. You know, in these critical cases, you don't have time to read all the documentation. So everything is, is coming at once. And they need to, for example, uh, analyze previous conditions. This data is then converted in searchable formats, what we call embeddings or vectors using OpenAI and AI search. So it's really easy to look up and cross-reference patient information from different systems. When it's time for the patient triage, OpenAI steps in with advanced language models, analyzes the patient data to help prioritize, to give priority who needs immediate care, ensuring critical cases get attention first. So this setup helps the hospital make quick and informed decisions, dramatically improving the emergency room efficiency and patient care. However, as this company prepared to move into production, they realized they had underestimated the complexity of meeting compliance regulations, especially given that they are using sensitive data. This uh, prompted them to take additional measures to protect patient privacy and ensure they meet all the regulatory standards before fully implementing their new system. So I see this is uh, very helpful, obviously. But again, you just mentioned uh, mentioned all these like challenges. So how did they actually address these challenges and issues? To go into production, as we stated before, you need to base yourself on the well-architected framework. You need to base yourself on the best practices. So for example, to address their compliance and security issues, they took several key steps. They carefully classify their data. They implemented strong encryption to keep sensitive data information secure. For managing access, they integrate and manage identities, key vault, also that help in handling secrets in more in secrets and more securely and simplified user control. They put also network isolation measures in place using private endpoints to drastically cut down the risk of unauthorized entry into our systems to reduce human errors, because you know there is a part of human error in, in these deployments, they use a standard deployment using infrastructure as code with Microsoft uh, Azure Bicep, and also in some cases, some other companies use uh, Terraform, but it's a choice. So in order to ensure that they have a repeatable process, they combine data management, access control, secure networking, and automate deployment to create a resilient and secure platform for the Azure AI applications. That's awesome. So is there a way for companies to make sure to use these best practices or implement these best practices uh, by default when they actually go out and deploy these AI applications? That's a very good question. And what we're trying to do is we're work working very hard to provide you with reference implementations, so end-to-end -end baseline architectures. These are designed to offer foundational baseline for building and deploying enterprise gen AI and machine learning applications that will leverage open AI language models. This reference architecture we're seeing on the screen illustrates how to integrate an Azure platform landing zone, all the shared components such as the connectivity, management, identity, express routes, uh, firewalls, etc. So your enterprise environment with the Azure AI applications that is focused on providing AI workloads, such as Azure Machine Learning, Azure AI Studio, OpenAI. So in this architecture, we guide you through the setup of your management groups, 
implementation of appropriate policies, rules based access control, firewall, DDoS protection, and security solutions such as Defender for Cloud. For the application side, it includes Azure Machine Learning, Prompt Flow, and it gives you a complete and scalable solution. Awesome. Uh, these are some great tips, uh, Freddie. Thank you very much. Um, so obviously, like a lot of our viewers are now interested to learn more. Uh, where can they find more about this? This is very important to share with you. First of all, there's a big community around this different information. So what we recommend you is join the community. We have things that are provided by Microsoft, but also a large community around AI, landing zones, infrastructure code. So first of all, you need to visit the Azure Architecture Center. This is your bread and butter when you are talking about reference architectures that are validated and provided by Microsoft. So this is your first starting point. The second one is to check the well architected framework. We have just released two, really, two service guides that are related to what we're talking today about OpenAI and Azure Machine Learning. This is a must read for everyone that is interested in, to, in these technologies. For establishing secure, scalable, compliant, please go to the Cloud Adoption Framework uh, on Azure. And be sure to check out the baseline OpenAI end-to-end -end chat reference architecture, because you not only have the architecture, you also have the code that helps you deploy and implement this kind of solution. Awesome. Thank you very much, Freddie. So as I, to sum it up, we have a great uh, tooling here available with Azure Landing Zones, the Cloud Adoption Framework, the Well-Architected Framework, and our reference architectures, and everything, basically, uh, Freddie talked about today. So again, thank you very much, Freddie, for being here today. Uh, I had the chance to learn a lot. Also, thank you to everyone watching. Make sure you check out the description below to learn all about the actual resources we just mentioned. And make sure you turn it, tune in to the next episode of the Azure Enablement Show. Thanks for watching.